that's going to be our next section of TV film books. Hello, Facebook uh, family, wall fans, uh, social platform family, YouTube, whatever you're watching this on. Um, thanks for joining us. So back to TV film books. We're going to talk about this because there is a fantastic, a fantastic, some fantastic news that I got today. Uh, there was a movie back, I can't remember the exact year of it. Uh, I, I want to say early 2000s, and it was, it was called Wet Hot American Summer. This was one of those fantastic sleeper films. It didn't have a lot behind it. Uh, had a lot of kind of stars at the time, and then a lot of those stars went on to become big stars. If you're not familiar with it, uh, it has people like Ken Moreno in it, um, who you, you've seen it. Uh, you've seen him in things, even if you don't realize that, that you've seen him in stuff. If, as soon as you saw his face, you, you would know. Uh, Janine Garoppolo, just a whole host of comedic stars. Uh, they put out this movie, it had a huge cult following, it's a fantastic movie. If you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it. I think it's honestly probably required watching, uh, would, would be Wet Hot American Summer. Uh, and what they did was Netflix picked it up for, for a quick, not picked it up, uh, but they greenlit a, 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 a quick season, like essentially a show around Wet Hot American Summer. Uh, and it, it ended up being a prequel to the movie, which was extra comical because all of them uh, we're much older at the time. I mean, this was like 10 years later. Uh, and it was, it was still it was high, high, high comic value. Uh, thoroughly enjoyed the show as well. Um, you know, obviously not quite as good as the movie, but really, really pretty close. Um, and now what they have announced, and we kind of knew this was coming, they're doing more episodes. Uh, what they're doing now, though, is there's a point in the movie where they say, we all need to come back. And it, for a little clarification, if you haven't seen it, they're all counselors at a summer camp, and it revolves around this summer camp, and they all go there every year to this summer camp. Uh, and what they do at the end of the movie, the original movie, is they say, we should all come back here 10 years later uh, and see where we all are. Well, we're getting that 10 years later. Finally, we're getting that 10 years later. In August, uh, they're releasing, I believe it's 10 episodes on Netflix, uh, where you're going to be able to see all these characters 10 years later. So if you haven't seen Wet Hot American Summer, the movie, now is the time to see it. I highly recommend it. Can't recommend it enough. And then head on over and check out the episodes on Netflix. You know you have Netflix. If you don't have Netflix, you probably have a friend that has Netflix. Steal their password. That's what I have so many friends that don't pay for Netflix. I don't give out mine readily, uh, but I know a lot of people that are just basically using other passwords. Netflix has been trying for years to, to kind of get around that, and it just hasn't happened. Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones. We're now less than a month away from Game of Thrones. I'm, I don't have a calendar in front of me. Is it like three weeks? It, it, it's July uh, 18th is when Game of Thrones comes back. And they just released a trailer this week. Uh, the, one of the most, it is, I guess, the most recent trailer. Uh, and it's just, it's just packed full of stuff. I'm not going to sit here and, like, dissect the trailer or anything, but if you're a Wall fan, I mean, a Wall fan, if you're a Thrones fan, uh, you're already excited. I don't need to, to, to drum up any excitement for, for Game of Thrones. You know what it is if you're a fan. If you're not, uh, I highly recommend it. I'm one of those people, personally, when a show gets really popular, uh, like Breaking Bad did and, and The Wire, I tend to, to shy away from it slightly, only because, like, there's this little punk in me, you know, when I was, when I was very much younger, I was a little punk rock kid, and, it, like, just being trendy was, like, the worst thing you could do. So when everybody gets on something, uh, hey, Sean Moore, when everybody gets on something, I tend to kind of shy away from it, even if it's good. And that's what happened with Game of Thrones. I was, I was very late to the game on Game of Thrones. Late to the game? Yeah, yeah, I know. These, happen, these things happen. <laughs> Go tell it to the wall. I say things that are, you know, either rhyme or whatever it might be. But I was late to the game with Game of Thrones. My wife and I both were. We started watching it. And a few episodes in, if you, you know, and most people have seen Game of Thrones. This is one of the most popular shows on television. A couple episodes in, I went, okay, I understand why everyone's obsessed with this show. Uh, and it's fantastic. Game of Thrones, if you haven't seen it, I feel like everybody has seen Game of Thrones. It's, it's a fantastic show. Uh, but it's coming back July 18th. I don't need to get you excited. I just, I don't. But I'm excited about it. So we're going to talk about it a little in the TV film book section of Go Tell to the Wall. Because that's what we do. All right. Moving on. I found an interesting article about a week ago. Which, and this actually happened um, almost a year ago. But I, I, didn't, I didn't know much about it, which is odd. Uh, because it involves arguably my favorite director, uh, who happens to be Kevin Smith. I went to film school because of Kevin Smith. I am I am unapologetic in, in stating that. I, I realize you know I, all these all these kids go to film school to be artsy and make these deep artsy films. I went to make films about 
you know, fart jokes. That's, base, I, that's what I did. I, I enjoy comedies. I don't like to think too much. And granted, I do enjoy thinking a little bit, but honest, I'm, I'm more of a comedy guy. Well, what happened was, uh, if you're not familiar with Kevin Smith, he has a, a daughter named Harley. Yes, her name is Harley Quinn, and she is absolutely named after the comic book character uh, in the DC universe. Uh, I'm really proud of myself for, for knowing this uh, because it's Batman. It was in, it's in part of Batman, and, and she's like Joker, the Joker's uh, on again, off again girlfriend. I, you know, I'm not real familiar with comic books. Someone on Facebook Live can maybe give me a little more insight uh, on who Harley Quinn is. Not that important to the story, but she is named after a comic book character. Go figure, Kevin Smith. Huge comic book geek. Of course, he names his daughter uh, Harley Quinn after a comic book character. Uh, so she's been, I don't want to say famous. She's, she's done a little acting, and she's Kevin Smith's daughter. Uh, so she, she's kind of a little bit, uh, you know, pseudo-famous just because of that. Uh, but what happened was she was getting trolled a little bit. Uh, and some, somebody on, I believe it was Twitter, it looks like Twitter, as, as I was looking through the article, I haven't seen the actual thread on any social, social platform. Uh, I was just reading an article, but it looks like Twitter. Uh, and someone went on there and basically was telling her that she was ugly and using just a lot of four-letter words. Uh, and then talking about how ugly she was and how bad of an actress she was. And she, she was in one of Kevin Smith's movies called Yoga Hosers, a very small independent movie. Uh, and then went on to talk about how talentless her father is, Kevin Smith. Just for, really unprompted. And I get it, these things happen. You know, and I even talk a little bit of crap about other, you know, stars on this show or whatever. Uh, but we're talking Harley Quinn Smith, Kevin Smith's daughter. At the time, I think she might be 18 now. At the time, probably wasn't 18. This was like a year ago, almost a year ago, that this was actually happening. Well, Kevin Smith, and I admire him even more for this because I'm pretty sure that I wouldn't have done this. He took the high road. So he jumped on Twitter because he's, he's very active in social media. He's a podcaster himself. If, you know, if you haven't listened to any Kevin Smith podcast, uh, they're very amusing, especially if you enjoy Go Tell It to the Wall or you enjoy uh, like Bill Burr or any of those geeky podcasts, you'd probably enjoy Kevin Smith. What he did was went on there and responded a little bit. I say a little bit. It was a lot. It was a lot. Um, but essentially, instead of insulting this person back, he took the high road. And it makes me very happy because, like I said, I don't think I would be able to do the same. I would like to think I would, but I don't know that I would do the same. Um, so what he did was he said, you know, instead of insulting people on social media, people you don't even know, people you don't even have a real reason, like, okay, maybe you think she's not the greatest actor, but why are you attacking her looks? Why are you, you know, really going after her father? No reason. And so what he said is instead of attacking teen girls on the internet, the best thing you can do is be successful and rise above it. If, if you think something isn't that great, do it better. You know? If you think what other people are making doesn't make people happy, you go and make something that makes people happy. That's what Kevin Smith was saying. And I really admire him for that because it takes a lot to do that. And he's so right. I mean, you can't deny that he's right. That is the best way to go. The best revenge, you know, there's always the joke like uh, you break up with someone, you know, uh, and then a year or two later, you're looking all good. Maybe you lost some weight or whatever it might be. You see your ex-boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever, and you're looking all good. And it's kind of that thing, you know, like you're rising above it. Maybe, maybe, you know, maybe it was a bad relationship. That's probably not the best example. But just think of that when you're thinking of something like this. Rise above it. Do better. If you think someone's bad at something or embarrassing at something, whatever it might be, then go prove them wrong. Go prove that you can do better. And I really admire Kevin Smith for that. I really do. I really do. So, moving on from someone that I admire to someone that really I just wish would go away. Recently, it was in the news that Gene Simmons, the lead singer of KISS, which I, I, they probably still tour and I don't, I don't know, do they still play music? Are they all even still alive? And I don't mean that in an insulting way, I just I know nothing about KISS. I, I really don't. And if you're a KISS fan, I apologize. But Gene Simmons needs to shut his mouth. I don't care how big your tongue is. Uh, and get over himself. So what he's done recently is, is applied for a trademark of, uh, of a sign that he does from the stage. And that would be uh, your, your pinky finger and your index finger in the air, but also with your thumb stick. <laughs> See, I get caught up. Thumb sticking out. So at first when I read this story, I was like, okay, come on. I happen to be a big tech, University of Texas fan because my cousin played there. Uh, and they put up the horns, the hook em horns. And they've done that since like the 50s. <laughs> so I was like, okay, dude, you ain't gonna win this one. Then I realized it was with the thumb out. 
so those of you on Facebook Live can maybe see the, 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 thumb, the thumb out, or if you're looking at this on YouTube uh, at a later date. And I get it. He thinks that he pioneered this, doing this from stage. Here's the thing. We have this little thing called ASL. It stands for American Sign Language. You know, the hand gestures, if you're not familiar with sign language. And this happens to be something in ASL. And that would be the symbol for I love you. So essentially, Gene Simmons is trying to trademark a language. Like, let's consider ASL a language, because it is a language. But he's essentially trying to, to trademark a phrase that's been around since before he was doing it, I'm sure, and just not thinking. Like he's, this is the type of greed that comes out of people like Gene Simmons. And I respect the guy. He was successful. He made a name for himself. He's made a lot of money. You know, good for you. Uh, but stop being greedy. You can't just take over the symbol for I love you in ASL. You know, so then what's going to happen? If, if anyone who, who can't speak or can't hear is using sign language, they can't do this without paying you money. You know, and we've reached a point where people have realized that there's a lot of organizations, and it's happened for a long time, but recently I'm seeing more and more of it. They're realizing that they should have someone that knows ASL, uh, whether it be a public speaking event or even music. I'm seeing it at concerts now uh, where they have someone out there who knows ASL and is signing along with all the lyrics. So now if someone is saying, I love you, and that person makes the I love you sign, they're going to pay Jim Simmons. This is what he thinks. He, he thinks he needs to be paid because this is his symbol. Get over yourself, Gene Simmons. Get over yourself. And please just go away. Cause I, like, honestly, I'm sick of the guy. I'm so sick of the guy. I've never been a Kiss fan. I, I could care less. I, you know, I respect that he made money and everything. Uh, but go away. Just go away. Stop, tr stop being greedy. Trying to trademark things. You know? And I, I, I guarantee the guy's got plenty of freaking money. You know? So you've got to trademark this. Just you know, Come on. Come on. That's enough. All right, we're going to get serious for a second here, and I've kind of tried to break this up. I said at the top of the podcast, uh, and I said it in the teaser video that I did before the podcast, we're going to get a little serious on this episode. It's, it's just going to happen. There's things happening, and we're going to get a little serious, and this is one of those moments. And this is one of those moments that it hits personally for me, because as I've talked about many times on this podcast, uh, I suffer from mental illness. I have obsessive compulsive disorder as well as obsessive anxiety disorder. Uh, which has been debilitating at times, absolutely debilitating. And the, that's why things like this uh, really hit home for me, and I feel the need to talk about them. Uh, so Carrie Fisher, rest in peace, passed away a few months ago. Uh, and her, her, uh, the, the toxicology report uh, came out finally like a week ago. And what happened was they found uh, some drugs in her system. They found cocaine, uh, ecstasy, and maybe heroin. I believe it was heroin. Uh, now I do want to clarify one thing because this this happened with my wife last week when this when this came down. She came home uh, and she goes, "Did you see what happened with Carrie Fisher?" I said, "Yeah, yeah, I'm not surprised." And she goes, "That's crazy. How does she have all these drugs in her system and she's getting on a plane?" And it's like, okay, so just so everyone understands, you can have drugs in your system and not actually be high on those drugs at the time. A lot of drugs stay in your system for weeks. If you're a heavy drug user, it can be months. So it doesn't mean that she was, she was flying on an international flight super high on cocaine and ecstasy and whatever else. Now she was supposedly sober. She's been sober for a very long time. Uh, she's an advocate uh, for sobriety as well as mental illness because she suffered from mental illness. And what happened was when this news came out, a lot of people were kind of getting on her. I mean, I guess getting on her. She, she's not here anymore to even defend herself, but it, it was like this big disappointment. You know, and they're like, oh, this is terrible. Well, really, this is what happens when you're an addict, when you have mental illness. It, it, it's, there's so many layers to this. So first of all, she was an addict at one time. And that's a hard thing to beat. A chemical addiction, that is a very difficult thing to beat. And she supposedly beat it, and, and, and really, I'm sure, had been fighting for a very, very long time to stay sober. The part that hits home for me is when you have a mental illness like that, what you do is you do tend to, to try to self-medicate, to make yourself feel better. And that's probably what was happening here. She probably made a mistake, of course, but we can't hold that against her and take away everything she did uh, in the world of mental illness and the awareness 
for people with mental illness and with drug addictions and everything else. She struggled. It was rough. I guarantee it was rough for her. And we can't hold that against her. That shouldn't ruin the fact that she was Princess Leia, that she was such a big advocate for all of these things. It shouldn't ruin that. And it just shouldn't. And if it did for any of you out there, I want you to step back and take a look at yourself and consider those factors that go into it. And what's important. And what happened. And it shouldn't change the way you think of her. It's disappointing, yes. But it doesn't change what she did. It doesn't change all the good things that she did. It doesn't. So think about that. And even if you weren't one of those people that thinks it, maybe one of your friends do. You know, fill them in on that. It ain't easy. It's just not easy. And that's what she was dealing with. All right, I gotta take a second. We got the, uh, we got the beer of the week this week. Happens to be a uh, Figaro Mountain Brewing Company Hoppy Poppy India Pale Ale. If you're new to the podcast, I drink a beer on every episode. It's like my security blanket. And then I tend to talk about it. Not because I'm being paid by Figaro Mountain Brewing Company or anything, but because I like beer. I like beer. I like to talk about the beer I'm drinking. It's here. Figaro Mountain Brewing Company Hoppy Poppy India Pale Ale. I enjoy it. It's a little more floral than I prefer in my IPAs. Uh, I am reading that it's a West Coast IPA. I still don't know the difference between a West Coast IPA and an East Coast IPA. I don't get it. I, I don't get that in depth. For me, it's like, I like it, I don't like it. You know, I, it's, it's got notes of, I don't know what it has notes of. It, I, I like it. It's a pale ale. I like it. I see Chris watching there. Chris is probably not drinking a pale ale. He admitted to me years ago uh, that he does not like pale ales, despite the popularity. But it's okay. Not everyone's perfect. <laughs> no, a lot of people don't like pale ales. My wife hates them. Hates them. But I enjoy them. I enjoy them. It's probably because I grew up on Stone. And, like, Stone was making these kind of heavier, heavier beers. Like, when I was a teenager, before, any, like, if you lived in San Diego, maybe you'd heard of Stone at the time. Uh, but before most of you had even heard of Stone Brewing, uh, I was drinking it when they were just this little nothing brewery, uh, simply because uh, my uh, my dad repped one of the owners. He was a financial advisor. Uh, so he's come home with these big jugs of, of, of good stone beer. So I enjoy it. Hoppy Poppy, India Pale Ale, Figaro Mountain Brewing Company. It is a California beer and apparently a West Coast style IPA. I don't know. Yeah. All right, we're going to move along here. Lighten it up a little bit. Lighten it up a little bit. I did warn all of you. We're wearing a little bit of a little bit of Red Sox gear tonight. You know, a little Boston shirt, little little Red Sox hat. Uh, and there's a reason for that. One of my favorite baseball players of all time is getting his number retired by the great Boston Red Sox, the greatest baseball team on the face of the earth. I'm gonna get a lot of arguments and comments from that. I already know my buddy Seth's gonna text me as soon as he listens to this podcast. He happens to be a Yankee fan. Uh, so he's going to give me a hard time about that one. But to me, it's the best, best baseball team on the face of the earth. Again, I see Chris is, Chris is watching. He'll agree with me. Uh, but I, I just I wanted to give David Ortiz a little bit of love. Because he, personally, he happens to be one of my favorite baseball players, uh, probably of all time. He honestly will probably go down as, as minimum third favorite baseball player of all time, uh, possibly second. You know, he, He's kind of sitting there at second right now, but I'm waiting to see what Dustin Pedroia does over the next couple of years, because uh, that guy's a beast. He's a beast, and he's, he's kind of near in the end. Um, and one thing that makes me love him, he has the best birthday you can have, which happens to be November 18th. Uh, so if you're not familiar with, with that, now you know. Uh, and the only reason I know is because my birthday happens to be November 18th. If you're a Disney fan, it's freaking Mickey Mouse's birthday, too. Yeah, I got cupcakes uh, every, every year on my birthday at Disney simply because uh, it happened to be Mickey Mouse's birthday. Nobody's buying me cupcakes. Nobody gave, nobody gave a crap about my birthday. But it's Mickey's birthday. Oh, we gotta have cupcakes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how it works. Um, but I, I'm not gonna get heavy into like the actual sports ball aspect. Uh, but he's one of these just good kind of human beings all around. You know, you hear about these athletes and domestic abuse and, and drug abuse and and whatever else that might be getting in trouble with the law. Uh, David Ortiz, or Big Poppy as he's known, is really one of those guys that that tend, he pretty much stayed clean. You know, we can talk about steroids. I'm not gonna get into like that whether. You think he, he did steroids and, and anything else that was a different time. Um, but as far as, you know, staying, keeping his nose clean. He married his wife in 03. Been with her ever since. Couple kids. Uh, and he's from the Dominican Republic. So he really came from nothing. Came from nothing in the Dominican Republic. No money, no nothing. 
came to this country, started playing baseball, um, and, and really made a name for himself. You know, he, he played for a little while in Minnesota. Uh, they dropped him, and Boston picked him up. And really, I mean, he took us to three World Series. He ended that 86-year World Series drought in 2004. It was one of the main uh, reasons that, that that drought ended, and they, they finally won a freaking World Series. Uh, and the other thing I, I really, really love about him uh, is he's very charitable. He has multiple different charity organizations uh, that he works with. He's, he's constantly working with... Uh, it's the Children's Hospital in Boston. I don't know if it's Boston Children's. I can't remember the, the exact name of it, but the big one. Like in LA, we have uh, Children's Hospital Los Angeles, which happens to be one of the uh, the big hospitals here. So this would be like the Boston uh, comparable hospital. Uh, he's always doing stuff like that. He ran the Boston Marathon this past year and raised a bunch of money for charity, uh, mainly uh, raising money for people that were injured in the uh, in in the Boston Marathon bombing in 2013. He was obviously a, a, a big part of that because he played for the Red Sox. Uh, and if you haven't seen it, even if you're not a baseball fan, I would encourage you to go, just go look up on YouTube uh, and see David Ortiz talking on the field uh, the, the first game at home after the Boston Marathon bombing. Um, and it, it's hard not to love the guy. It, it, it really is. Uh, so he's getting his number retired uh, tomorrow. Today's Thursday. It is June 22nd. You might be listening to this four days from now. That's the beauty of podcasts. Uh, but he is getting his number retired this weekend. I'm looking forward to watching it. I've got my Boston gear on tonight. I will probably be sitting either on my couch uh, or on someone else's couch or in a bar tomorrow with my Ortiz jersey on uh, watching that number retirement ceremony because, you know, you got to give love to, 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 to a good human being uh, and a great athlete that I watched for many years. On the same note, and, and this is, he's one of those guys that kind of transcends uh, teams. You know, like even even if you hate the Red Sox, a lot of I've talked to many people that hate the Red Sox and they still have respect for him because he's such a good player uh, and because of what he's brought to the game. So it's kind of like like I hate the Yankees. Respect for Derek Jeter. I, I've always had respect for him. In fact, I watched when uh, his last baseball game and all these other things, despite the fact that I uh, that I just really don't don't care for the Yankees. Uh, in fact, he's also getting a street named after him in Boston. Uh, so if you're if you're ever in Boston near the ballpark, it's near the ballpark, r not right next to the ballpark. Uh, there, as of this weekend, will be a David Ortiz drive, uh, and and maybe maybe we'll have some kind of contest if anyone's out in Boston, listeners out in Boston, get some fun little photos with the David Ortiz drive sign. This one's just, I haven't even thought about this at all, uh, so, so don't start sending me pictures just yet or do whatever. People send me weird stuff on the. On Facebook. Nobody likes to engage on the page. They just like to send me messages. <laughs> and sometimes it's good because they're like, dude, you're t terrible. I'm like, oh, thanks for not posting that on the page. I appreciate that. You know, <laughs> but it happens. All right, moving along to tech. We're, uh, we're tech light today. And, and I got to be honest, we're, I, I'm going to get into some of this rant and raving here. Uh, and we need time for it. We just need time for it. So Samsung had a little announcement just recently. I can't remember the exact date. For their VR, we've talked. I've talked about the the same like VR and, and augmented reality and the VR headsets, and I've talked about it many times. I've got one at home, uh, and today I, when I came, I actually just came across it today. Uh, when I saw this article, I got really excited to to actually use my headset again. And I think I, I, I debated putting this in with sports ball since it's coming right after sports ball, so it doesn't really matter. But I feel like even if you're not a sports fan, you can appreciate this. So what Samsung has done is is put together virtual reality experiences. At ballparks, they're doing 20 of these throughout the baseball season. Baseball season runs uh, basically into the fall. Uh, they're doing 20 different things where you're, you're going to be able to basically put on your headset and you're going to be immersed in this baseball experience. So whether it's on the field, whether it's like with the players, whatever it might be. Um, so honestly, even if you're not a baseball fan, it'd probably be a fun thing to to kind of throw a headset on or even just look at if you don't have a headset and you're looking at your phone, um, because you're going to be you're going to be seeing not only the baseball field, but you know it's. It's just interesting. Even if you, you don't know anything about the game of baseball, you're, you're still getting this immersive experience in a big ballpark. You're going to see cityscapes and everything else. Uh, so I'm looking forward to checking it out. As soon as, as soon as one of them actually like happens, I'll be popping on that headset and, and checking it out. All right, so moving along. <laughs> I got one more thing for tech. I really thought, I really thought it was dead, but I found out recently Google Glass still exists. It's still a thing. Yeah, totally thought it was dead. I've never been a fan of it. 
uh, but it still exists to the point where they put out a uh, they put out an update just recently. So if, if you're one of like the two people that has Google Glass, uh, you just got an update for your Google Glass. I, I honestly, I don't even know anyone that has them. I'm not a big fan of the Google Glass. I, I, I think I'm very much into tech, augmented reality. All it's very interesting and and fun to me. Google Glass, you're getting a little ridiculous, if you ask me. It's just, it's a little ridiculous. I'm not a fan of the Google Glass. Uh, but like I said, if you're one of the two people, you got an update, and apparently Google Glass still exists. All right, we're going to get into some common sense here. And I'm trying, I'm, I kind of lined this up to break it up a little bit, wall fans. I really did. Because we're going to get heavy. It's just what's happening. We're going to get heavy. So bear with me, bear with me. It's all important. I feel as if it's, and particularly one subject is beyond important. And I try to avoid those types of subjects. But today as I was thinking about it, I, I just realized that it has to be talked about. And it's being talked about, but it needs to be talked about more. And I feel like if, if, if I don't talk about it, I'm remiss in, in what I'm doing. Despite the fact that this is just a fun podcast where I'm talking to a wall. It needs to be talked about. So we're going to get into that. But first, we're going to get into some other things. So I talked about a few episodes back. Um, I talked about a, a an instance uh, where... Oh gosh, I'm getting my notifications on the Facebook. Uh, sorry, guys. Uh, so an instance where there was a, a, a girl and a, she had a boyfriend uh, who was like 18 at the time. She was like 17 at the time. Uh, he had thought about killing himself, had talked about suicide. Uh, and had talked to her and said he wanted to kill himself and all this other stuff. And there's text messages that became public where she was encouraging him to do it. And honestly, when I first talked about this, I probably got on her a little harder than I should have. Because more of those text messages came out. It did come to light uh, that at times she did say, you know, maybe don't do this. But the bottom line is, in the end, she did. And she got convicted like a week ago. She got convicted. I, I, I'm not, I don't know the exact conviction, uh, that you know, the technicality of what she was convicted of. I do know, because she was 17 at the time, that she was tried as a juvenile, uh, not as an adult. So that is going to be a bit of a difference. Um, but it got me thinking, because all these things came out. And talking about how it just set such a precedent, you know, and for what your kids do as far as texting and everything else. And I get that side of it. I really do, wall fans, because it's tough when you think about kids and things kids say, you know, the way kids talk to each other. I mean, for God's sake, me and my friends and I still, to this day, like, we, we don't, we don't, it's not all lovey-dovey. That's how we show love to each other is we're kind of mean, you know, there's insults, sarcasm. My family, for God's sake, I got the most, one of the most sarcastic families I've ever been around, my extended family. It's just sarcasm, sarcasm, sarcasm. So I get it. And you do need to talk to your kids in this day and age. Because even if she didn't realize what she was doing and how bad it might have been, because originally when this came out, it was like she wanted to play the victim. She wanted to be the girl that lost her boyfriend. And I think part of that was happening here. But what we, do, what we need to keep in mind, and this is going to give you a little bit too much insight into my personal life. When it comes to mental illness, you don't talk about it a lot. It took me many, many, many years to be able to talk to it with, with anyone outside of like a group of four people. And all of those people were related to me or very close to me. It was very tough in my late teens and 20s. Didn't want to talk about it, was embarrassed. And in fact, at that time, there was a time when there was one person who really got to hear all my crazy. And that was my mother. She got the full brunt of the crazy. Now there's two. My mother gets some of it, and unfortunately my wife gets some of it. As much as I talk about it on this show, really no one outside of those two people have gotten the full crazy. There's a couple my father's gotten a little bit of it just from raising me and everything else, and I do talk to him about stuff. But really there's those one or two people. One or two. And that's what happens a lot of time with mental illness. There are one or two people that someone with mental illness will talk to and confide in. 
And in this instance, for Conrad Roy, Michelle Carter, unfortunately, probably was that person. So what happened here is when this conviction came down, everyone jumped on the parents and said, where were the parents? And do the parents deserve a little bit of blame for not being aware? Of course. Of course they do. But the bottom line is, he probably wasn't showing all these signs to his parents. He wasn't. His one person was Michelle Carter. That is a common theme with anyone who has mental illness. They have one, maybe two people they, they really confide in. Even me, like I said, my wife gets the brunt of it, my mother on occasion. I talk about it on the show, and I'll give you a little bit of insight, but you don't, you, you got no idea. You really don't, Wall fans. You have no idea where the real crazy can go. And unfortunately, and I'm not going to sit here and bash Michelle Carter. I'm not. But when you're talking to your kids, when you're talking to your friends, whatever it might be, keep that in mind. Yes, the parents deserve some blame, but keep that in mind. He wasn't telling his parents this. That's his way of asking for help. That's what that is. That was his way of asking for help. And I'll tell you, you can hide it real well. Real well. When I had one of my major breakdowns in like 2007, had it right after Christmas, major breakdown. Talked to my mom, and I actually took a trip to San Diego. My cousin happened to be playing in the Holiday Bowl that year. Went down to San Diego, went to the game, hung out for a couple days. Kept my mouth shut. Kept my mouth shut. And I had had this already terrible breakdown. Kept my mouth shut. And I talked to my mom right after it. And I filled her in. And then it was funny because she actually spoke to my uncle and filled him in. My uncle that I had just spent a couple days with at this game and hanging out and whatever else. And my uncle Keith, God rest his soul, said to my mother, I had no idea. I had no idea. And keep in mind, Wall fans, I was extremely, I'm extremely close with all of my family, including that uncle. But he had no idea. And I spent time talking with him. Sure, my cousins had no idea. My cousins were there as well. No idea. You know why? Because my mother was the only one I talked to about it. And that's what was happening here. Now, is it Michelle Carter's responsibility? No. But we need education when it comes to these kind of things. That's all it is. It's awareness and education. And that's why I talk about these things on the podcast. I don't like talking about mental illness. Who likes talking about it? Nobody. But it has to be talked about for these kind of reasons. I've been fortunate enough to really never be, have been full suicidal. But unfortunately, there's many people out there that have these tendencies. And especially at a young age, kids don't realize the finality of it. They don't realize there's no coming back. And of course they do, they know what death is. But they don't think about the finality of that. And there's no coming back. And really the thing that's kept me from from ever having those kind of thoughts in, in my own personal struggle is I think about leaving my mother. Before it was leaving my mother. Now it's leaving my mother, my father, my wife, my daughter. So as much as I, I really never went to that full spectrum where, where some people unfortunately do end up, even if I did, I had those things. But here's Conrad Roy, who maybe thought he had that thing. A naive 18-year-old and that thing that he wanted to stay here for told him, just go do it. So think about that. Think about that, Wall fans. Think about that. I'm not going to blame her like crazy, but we all need to be aware of what's going on. And you could save someone's life. You could save someone's life. All right, we're going to move along here. And I told you we were going to get a little heavy. And we're going to get a little lighter here for a couple minutes, and then we get heavy gonna get heavy. I'm gonna take a little sip of my Figaro Mountain Hoppy Poppy India Pale Ale, which is a West Coast, uh, West Coast India Pale Ale featuring a bunch of hops. They list these hops and stuff. I, I don't understand. All right, so this one's constant, constantly been bothering me for many, many years. And there's a few different elements to this. Now, I've been in marketing and advertising for a very, a very, very long time, so I get it. 
It's all about viral marketing and everything else. And in fact, if you're paying attention out there, one thing I forgot to mention, working on some stickers. Working on some go-tell-it-to-the-wall stickers. So if you're a wall fan, hit me up on the Facebook, on the Twitter, whatever it might be. Uh, we'll send you some stickers. I'm all about the viral marketing and getting stuff out there and everything else. Uh, but sometimes it gets out of hand. You know, junk mail is one thing. Uh, I check the mail today, and I don't check the mail every day. It was like a couple days worth of mail. And I'm, I'm talking like a stack, probably inch and a half thick of mail. You know what I brought in, inside out of that? I know you want a sticker. <laughs> Number one wall fan, of course, is the first one to say I want a sticker. <laughs> You're getting a sticker, Darcy. Don't worry. Uh, probably a couple, because I know you'll put them to good use. Uh, so, and this is what I tend to do, and, and I learned this years ago. Before I actually bring the mail inside, I stand there, like, near my trash can outside, uh, and I don't actually bring any mail in except for what is useful out of the mail, like actual mail. So out of a stack of mail, no joke, inch thick, not even exaggerating that, inch thick, uh, sorted it out. Out of all that, I brought two things into the house. Two things out of like 25. Probably more than that. You know, ads and everything else. Which is one thing. Okay, I've learned to accept this. The thing that gets me is the amount of trash that this creates. So in California, which I'm all for, you cannot get shopping bags at the grocery store because everyone went crazy and said this is a waste. <laughs> this is a waste of resources. However, no one mentions the fact that we get all this junk mail. And no one mentions the thing that bothers me the most. And that is these stupid flyers on cars. Now, I get it if you're at a concert or something, you know, you're out at a big event, fine. That's a marketing opportunity. What happens in my neighborhood is these businesses come around the neighborhoods, the suburban areas, where I'm parked outside my house. My house, not a business. My house. And they come and they put flyers on the car. What happened today? Walked outside for a second. Blazing hot in LA this week, blazing hot. I walked outside for a second, I look and my car's parked in front of the house, and I look and there's a freaking flyer on it. Like, all right, I'm going to go grab this flyer before it goes flying off and, and just creates moop all around my street. Moop, matter out of place if you're not a burner, litter. I take it off. Kind of like, and, and here's the thing. I don't even look at these things I, because I refuse. I don't even look at them. They go straight in the trash. I do look at the junk mail for a second, but I take stuff off my car and go straight in the trash. So I go outside, you know, it's gone, whatever. I go outside a couple hours later. Having a look at my car. There's another freaking flyer on it. Two. Over the course of like two hours. And essentially what they're doing, these businesses, they're just littering my street. Because no one actually freaking looks at these flyers. It's one thing in a business, maybe, you, or you're at a big event, you, you know, concert, let's say you're at a big concert and someone's giving out a concert. Maybe you are looking at those. Nobody's looking at these things when they're getting up to get in their car in the morning to go to work. You know, what happens is these things end up in the street. These flyers, they're in the street and it's litter. So we need to stop it, especially in neighborhoods. Just stop it in neighborhoods. I don't care how great your business is. I'm sure it's very great. I shouldn't have to worry about flyers on my cars in front of my house. You know, constantly going out. My, my car's got flyers on it. My wife's car's got flyers on it. All the freaking time, flyers, flyers all the time. It needs to slow down. It needs to slow down. Because I'm done with it. I'm done with it. They go straight in the trash anyway. You're, just, you're, you're, you're wasting money, creating litter, and wasting money. Stop. All right, so we're going to move on. I have a, before we get into the real heaviness of this week, I found a, uh, uh, feel, a little bit of a feel-good story. I would call this a feel-good story. So... I came across this article recently, this week. I believe it happened in the UK. I was looking at it. I can't remember now where it happened. I believe it was the UK, somewhere in the UK. Uh, yes, let's see, I'm getting slack from Twitter. Recycle bin. Actually, we, we have two recycle bins at my house, so all these flyers and this junk mail do go in the recycle bin. We have two recycle bins at our house, one trash can. Uh, and the recycle bins very much tend to, to fill up quicker. A lot of that could be... Uh, 
you know, glass bottles and aluminum cans. Uh, but yes, they go in the recycle bin. You should always recycle. You know, that's important. Uh, so anyway, uh, there's a school. It's a private school in the UK. I assume a private school. I don't, maybe all the schools in the UK um, actually do have uniforms. Um, so I can relate. I'm a product of, of 13 years of private Catholic education, kindergarten through the end of high school. Uh, now, for, for kindergarten through eighth grade, we had a uniform. High school, we had a dress code. You had to, you had to wear a, a collared shirt and, and pants. Uh, at the time, this was the 90s. Most guys were wearing dickies because those were kind of the cool pants to wear. Uh, so we're wearing dickies, you know, whatever else it might be. Uh, and, and sneakers, you know. Um, and luckily, when I was in elementary and middle school, and even in high school, you were allowed to wear shorts. They had uniform shorts you could wear. Um, and then in high school, you know, you just had to, you had to wear nice shorts. They were certain shorts. You know, you couldn't wear, like, sloppy cargo shorts, whatever it was. Uh, so at this school in the UK, uh, it's been... And someone needs to help me out there. It's been like 30 degrees Celsius, which I imagine is like 90 degrees. It's been really hot. Really hot. They're having a little bit of a heat wave, much like we are here in Los Angeles. I think other parts of the country have been having a heat wave. I don't have time to check on weather for other parts of the country. i got a seven-month-old. I barely have time to check on the weather here to, to make sure that I can walk outside without bursting into flames. Or really that my seven-month-old can walk outside without bursting into flames. Not walk out. She's not walking yet, but, you know, be carried outside. Uh, so these boys at this public school, or this private school, uh, because it's so hot, had asked, can we please wear shorts instead of long pants because it's so hot? And the school said, no, no, you can't do that because the uniform is pants. And then they said, and if, you, you know, if you've ever seen like private school uniforms, uh, you know, boys tend to be wearing like pants and a, and a nice shirt or whatever. Uh, most, most times girls are in skirts, They're like these plaid skirts and different colors and everything else but these plaid skirts uh so the boys said well the girls get to wear skirts they don't have to wear long pants and so the principal or whatever the people that were talking to him uh said well you can go ahead and wear a skirt so you know what happened the next day <laughs> 30 boys showed up to the school wearing the uniform skirt and i think it's awesome i think it's awesome not only because it's practical see i'm a burner we got some burners watching on the live feed. Lots of dudes wear skirts out there, you know. If you're comfortable in a skirt, I'm I'm all for style. Like you want, to, you want it to be your style. But seriously, if if it's so hot that someone's telling you no, you need to wear these long pants and, and just and sweat and overheat. Good on you for wearing a skirt. Good on them for wearing a skirt, uh, and, and really proving that they have no shame and proving a point to the school. Like fine. You're not going to let us wear shorts. We're wearing skirts. Because that was their only option. And it's freaking hot out. You know? It's their only option. It's hot at the burn. I, I'm usually wearing, wearing sarongs all week at the burn. Sarongs, whatever, you know, during the day when it's hot. The night is freaking cold. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. The desert, that's what it does. Dry lake bed. It's either really, really hot or really, really cold. Okay. So, I really didn't want to talk about this. I really didn't because I avoid these things. And not because I don't think they're important, but just because it doesn't really fit in the theme of the show. We have a lot of fun here on the show. You know, I talk about mental illness and everything else really because that's a personal, a personal thing for me and because not a lot of people are talking about it. Well, a lot of people are talking about this. But I feel the need uh, to also talk about it just in case anyone out there has been living under a rock, I guess. Um, and I have to be honest. And this, this would be, if you're not familiar with it, Philando Castile. He was shot. I believe it was, uh, was Philadelphia. Someone will correct me if I'm wrong on that. I, I really can't remember because I remember when it originally happened. And I kind of heard about it and I'm like, ooh, ooh, ooh. Um, and just a little background from me. There's been a lot of police brutality over the years, really since the beginning of time. Um, and there are some instances where we, can, where we can look at it and say, okay, that officer was dead wrong. And there's been other instances where I believe the officer was probably wrong uh, but often I find myself kind of sitting back and saying, okay, the officer was wrong, and this person shouldn't have died. This person shouldn't have been beat up. For example, the guy that was selling cigarettes in New York. You know, he shouldn't have been put in a chokehold. He shouldn't have. But it's a little easier if you comply. You know, whether the officer's right or not, it tends to be a little easier if you comply. Now, 
I'm not one to, to really get on people. I've never had serious issues with the law. You know, never been arrested. I'm fortunate. I, don't, I, I haven't had to deal with, outside of the, the Poway sheriffs who, who like to pull over teenagers going two miles an hour over the speed limit, I haven't had to dealt, deal with a lot of police in that way. Uh, but like I said, I, there's part of me that kind of sits back and is like, you know, this is dead, dead, dead wrong. But maybe there's a little bit of wrong on the other side too. But with Philando Castile, he didn't do anything wrong. He did nothing wrong. Nothing. And this is what hit me this week, is this dash cam video came out. Because I'd seen, I'd actually seen the Facebook Live video right after it happened, someone had shared it. And I'd seen the face, and it made me incredibly angry. But when you see this dash cam footage, you can't see this and not be angry. And if you're not angry, or at least realize that this police officer was dead wrong, I think you need to question yourself. I'll be honest about that, wall fam. And we're going to break down a little bit. This is, I mean, like I said, this is by far the worst example I've ever seen. So, Philando Castile, if you're not familiar with it, uh, was pulled over. Here's the first problem that I have with it. If you watch the dash cam video, the police officer that ended up, unfortunately, killing Phil Castile uh, called in that he was pulling over this car because the driver and the passenger looked like they familiar, uh, looked similar to some suspects from a robbery. I believe it was a robbery. Something happened. And he said, this is why I'm going to pull them over. Appropriately, I have uh, police sirens going on outside of my home studio right now. Surprisingly, no fireworks, just police sirens. Helicopters coming, wall fam, get ready for it. Or maybe that, that might be fire. So I'll probably lit a fire with the fireworks. Um, and said he, he said he was pulling over this car because it looked like, and then what happened was he pulled over Philando Castile, walked up to the, the, the driver's side window and said, do you know why I pulled you over? And he said, no. Already, there's dishonesty from this police officer. And I want to clarify something right now. It is my strongly held belief that the majority of police officers are good people. However, when things like this happen, we need to question. And we'll get into why this is extra frustrating. Goes up to the car and says, I pulled you over for a broken brake light. First line. He asks Philando Castile for his license and registration. And Philando says, okay, no problem. It's in my pocket. Right away, he says, I have a handgun that I carry. I have a license for it. And the officer says, okay, no problem. Don't reach for it. Philando responds, I'm not reaching for it. Don't reach for it. I'm not reaching for it. He's reaching for his driver's license and registration. The police officer then, who already has his gun out at this point, shoots him like four or five times. You can see it in the video. It's very graphic, but it needs to be seen. It needs to be seen. The heartbreaking part about it, his girlfriend's sitting in the passenger seat next to him. She's the one that Facebook Live did originally. Sitting in the passenger seat next to him. Her four-year-old daughter. Four-year-old daughter. Sitting in the back seat of this car. While this errant police officer just fires his gun carelessly into the car. No gun was pulled on him. Not one. No gun. In fact, Philando ad readily admitted, I have a gun. I have a license for it. And was still shot. In front of his girlfriend's four-year-old daughter. It was essentially his daughter. They were getting married. Fiance. This was his daughter, and he was shot and killed right in front of her. No regard by this police officer. No regard. And then what they do, they get the kid out of the car. Thank God. This little four-year-old, her, her life forever changed because this police officer was scared. He was scared of a black man who was legally carrying a firearm. This four-year-old's life is never going to be the same. Not only did she lose her father figure, he was murdered in front of her. This is murder, wall fans. He was charged with manslaughter. That's murder. 
If you see this video and don't realize that that is the very, at the very minimum, manslaughter, I, 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 the, you, need to think, you need to sit back and think about your life. And you can clearly see from the video that this police officer panicked. He shot him, and he starts throwing out the F-bomb like crazy. He shot him. Killed him. Shot him four or five times. Straight into him while he's in a car with his four-year-old daughter. And this police officer panicked. And that's what's crazy. That's what's crazy is I realize being a police officer is a tough job. I will admit that anytime. You take your life into your hands every day, and I fully respect police officers. The thing is, there needs to be better screening, and people need to realize that they can't be a police officer. I knew this in high school, that I couldn't be a police officer. In fact, I, I knew in my head, I said to myself, in my head, and I've said it to many other people, I would have walked in on a guy raping a woman, and I'd have just shot him as a police officer. Now, I know that. And that's why I'm not a police officer. If this guy can't handle pulling over a black man, and really this doesn't even have to do with race. This officer couldn't handle pulling over someone who was doing nothing illegal except for having a brake light that was out. If you can't handle it, you shouldn't be a freaking police officer. You shouldn't. Look at his girlfriend. She's handcuffed in the back seat with her daughter. Backseat of a police car with her daughter. Her daughter had to comfort her. Her boyfriend's just been murdered. Shot by a police officer for no good reason. It's sad. It's sad. And here's the two things that get me the most about this. Because it's one thing. I realize that things happen. The police officer was wrong. However, he was brought to trial for manslaughter. As he should have been. I think it's murder very least manslaughter. And a jury acquitted him. A jury of Philando Castile's peers acquitted this man. They saw that dash cam video. And essentially they said that police officer had every right to be scared for his life. If you watch the dash cam video, there is no reason. Philando Castile was incredibly polite. In fact, after Philando Castile was murdered, his girlfriend sitting in the passenger seat next to him was polite as heck. As this officer that had just murdered her boyfriend sat there screaming the F word and yelling at her, she continued to call him sir. She continued to call him sir. So this police officer who was trained to do this couldn't keep his stuff together. But that girlfriend, Diamond Phillip, Diamond, I can't remember her last name, Diamond Reynolds, I think. She was able to keep it together. And you know why? Because unfortunately we live in this world where you have to be trained to keep it together. Otherwise, you're probably going to get shot. And judging from this dash cam video, even if you keep it together, there's a chance you're going to get shot. And you're going to get murdered in your car in front of your fiancé and your daughter. Your four-year-old daughter. This happened. And a jury saw that and said that police officer had every right to be afraid for his life. Every right. He was afraid for his life because a man was being polite. And here's the kicker about it. I have heard my entire life, and many of you out there wall fans have heard the same thing. The way to protect yourself is to arm yourself. And Philando did this. He armed himself, legally. And you have all these gun, gun rights advocates out there saying, we all need to be armed, we all need to be armed. He was legally armed legally and stated that and had a license for it and the police officer didn't even give him a chance to pull that license he didn't and it's sad it's sad that we live in this kind of world and you know what's ridiculous we have this little organization called the national rifle association in america i think it's actually international i don't care i'm not a gun owner and honestly I, i'm not bashing gun owners you want to own a gun you're a hunter that's fine you know you think you need it for protection that's fine my father has a shotgun. He lives in a very rural part of San Diego. He has a shotgun to protect his livestock, to protect his horses. It's not out and being used all the time. Me, I live in Los Angeles, urban, an urban part of Los Angeles. I don't need a gun. So it's fine if you, if you have a gun, all for it. If you enjoy shooting, I have shotguns many times. I enjoy going to the range, all for it. 
But this is a time where the NRA should be stepping up. This is a time. This is what the NRA fought for. To be able to carry a gun. This is what they fought for. And they're silent. And I want to ask you, Wall fans, think about why they're silent. I don't know. I don't know. But why are they silent? Why has the NRA not said a thing about this? Because he did everything right. He did everything the National Rifle Association has fought for. To be able to carry that gun. Had his license. Extremely polite. Pointed out to the officer right away. Still shot and killed. And the NRA is silent. And I don't know if this is correct. And I think all of this transcends race. I'm sure race had a lot to do with it. I'm not dismissing that at all. But really, this is, this is even beyond that to me. However, with the NRA, what's happening here is another black man was shot and killed by the police. So the NRA has nothing to say about it. Nothing to say. You know, if they're a little spokesman, that hick that used to be a musician, I'm not even going to use his name because he's useless. And this isn't even political. That guy's useless. If that guy was shot and killed, I guarantee you the NRA comes out and has something to say. So think about that. Think about that, Wall fans. No justice. And everybody's silent. And I apologize that I even have to talk about this. And you've all heard it. Unless you've been living under a rock. But this is the ridiculousness of what's happened with Philando Castile. It's beyond me. It's beyond me. This is black and white. This isn't gray. This isn't like the guy in New York who maybe should have complied. Dead wrong, those police officers. Maybe he should have complied a little better. I'm not defending the police officers in that situation. Philando Castile did everything right and was still shot and killed. There's nothing else we can do. There's nothing else we can do, Wall fans. This is the world we live in, unfortunately. And that's why every episode, despite the fact that I rant and rave and all this other stuff, you know, we don't talk politics because politics is so d divisive. And I always encourage everyone to lift each other up. Be positive. Lift each other up. We're all burners. And that's why there was no Burning Man segment this week. No Burning Man segment. I didn't even want to get into that. And I know a lot of people that are listening on the podcast are going to be disappointed because that happens to be the most popular segment. This wasn't the week for it. It wasn't the week for it. We had to get serious. And I'm disgusted. And I'm disgusted that I have to bring up daughter in this world. And all I could think of, because when you watch that dash cam video, you see that four-year-old get pulled out of that back seat, all I could think of was, that could be me. That could be me. That could be me, my wife sitting in the passenger seat, and my daughter being pulled out of the back of the car. It's disgusting. It's disgusting, wall fans. And we need to talk about it. We need to stop it. And the best way to do that is with all of us. Lift each other up. Now, don't go bashing the police off, any police officers, anything like that. Don't do it. But just be aware. Be aware and lift each other up. That's all. That's what we need in this world. Positivity. Sometimes we have to get negative because these things need to come to light. They do. Philando Castile was murdered in cold blood. I'm probably being a little extreme there. He was murdered because a police officer was scared. It's insane. It's insane. All right, Wall fans, we're just about done. I'm going to stay on the Facebook Live for a couple minutes uh, just in case anyone has any comments or anything. Still waiting on my, uh, my Stan Lee respect pin, so we're going to be giving that away at some point. Uh, everyone else listening... At this point, you're really going for second place. I got a little photo I'm going to share later tonight from number one wall fan, Darshan. So you all got a lot to live up to if you expect to even get close to getting that pin. Uh, but keep that in mind. We're going to have that pin at some point. Working on the stickers. Those are coming soon. Uh, as always, follow us on Facebook. Facebook.com slash go tell to the wall. Uh, on Twitter, at tell the wall pod. Or my personal Twitter account, which is at magic muppet. Or just search my name. Uh, and as I mentioned at the top of the podcast, for those of you watching the live feed, you didn't get that part of it. YouTube is finally getting populated. We're finally putting some damn videos up there. Working on it. There's actually some content, content on there right now. Uh, so search Go Tell It to the Wall. 
on YouTube. Uh, once we get a little more followers and a little more uh, a little more traction there, we'll be able to get the custom URL and all that good stuff. Uh, and of course, I only mentioned it partially. I'm going to mention it again. Give Me Motion is on tour right now. Go listen to their new album. It's fantastic. Check out that music video uh, with zero shame, Sean O'Rourke in a skin tight uh, green morph suit. Yes. Yeah. Zero shame. Uh, yeah. It doesn't look good, uh, but check it out. It's kind of amusing. Uh, so we're going to stay on Facebook Live for just a few minutes. But for those of you out there listening on the podcast, uh, this has been episode 22. Episode 22 of Go Tell It to the Wall podcast. I am the one and only Sean O'Rourke. And remember, wall fans, no matter what you do, no matter who you see, no matter where you go, no matter who you meet, always, 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 always use common sense. Whew. All right, Facebook fans, thanks for joining. We had a bunch of people come in and out on it. Uh, it's really hot in the studio right now. Um, but thanks for joining. Check out the podcast. Like I said, <laughs> Darshan, one of these days I'm just going to let you come in and do the outro. It, like, it's got to happen. It's got to happen. Unless someone can, can even get close to you on, on your number one fandom. I don't see it happening. I just don't. Uh, but as always, if, if this is your first experience with Go Tell It to the Wall, uh, please follow us uh, on Twitter and on Facebook. Uh, but most importantly, uh, subscribe to the podcast itself. We're on iTunes, Google Play. Uh, the podcast is hosted on Podomatic. Hang on, I'm going to hit stop on the GoPro here. Uh, it's hosted on Podomatic, so if you want to get it there. It's also on many, 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 many podcast apps and websites. I find like a new one every week. There's so many podcast uh, apps and websites. So check it out. Just search Go Tell It to the Wall. Fortunately, I, I, I locked in the market on Go Tell It to the Wall, and I'm the only podcast out there. We're the only podcast out there uh, that's called Go Tell It to the Wall. So if you search Go Tell It to the Wall, you're going to get the podcast. Uh, don't search Go Tell It to the Mountain unless you're looking for like a bunch of Christian music and stuff. That is the play on words with Go Tell It to the Wall. We're talking to a wall. People like to talk from a mountain. I'm talking to a wall. I got a cat in the corner. That's what we do. Number one fan, Darshan, here as always. Uh, and thanks for joining. Like I said, subscribe. Uh, I, <laughs> I know, Bridget, I think you missed that on, uh, on our first live broadcast. I actually, I actually have stuff here. See, this is, this is all... I actually have a pile of stuff that's supposed to go on this wall here. And I just haven't done it. Uh, the most important stuff has gone up. You know, from the burn, we have the, the Muppet tile uh, and, and the street sign that I'm not supposed to have. Uh, but uh, I'm getting the stuff up here. I just haven't had time. So what happens when you have a seven-month-old? Bridget, you're giving me a heart. you got two, two kids at home. You're going to give me a heart. Yeah, you know, I'm just kidding. Uh, but, yeah, I do need to get stuff up there. Uh, I just, I'm going to do it at some point. As soon as I have a little bit of time, we'll get it done. I had some, some bridal shower at the house last weekend. I was cleaning and doing it. Like, I prioritized that. Uh, and of course, my cousin's going to be in town this weekend, so I'm going to be seeing uh, uh, seeing her quite a bit. Uh, oh, Bradley has one too. Ooh, oh, what number is Bradley's that you're not supposed to have? No, so many have them. It, okay, I, I, Darshan, remind me to tell you who it is, and you might have even seen it. Uh, <laughs> you might have even it was drunk chick. Uh, you might have even seen this, but we have a mutual friend who happens to be a conclave person and might be a campmate of mine, 720. How do you, oh, nice. Uh, uh, might be a campmate of mine, has the full-on sign, like including the pole. It's probably 715, I don't think there's a 720. Maybe there is, I don't know. I never go out that far. Everyone's that way out there. Uh, but has the actual pole straight out the ground from the burn. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna call him out here on the live broadcast. Uh, and then there's also another mutual friend who Maybe I alluded to a little bit uh, that has both signs. I just got one. Darshan, I'll let you know who it is. Uh, his name might start with a Y and end with a Eddie. <laughs> now that I've called him out on it. All right, so that's gonna take. That's gonna do it for tonight. I gotta go get. I gotta go get some dinner. I gotta make sure my my daughter's sleeping. My wife is probably like quit making noise in the room. She's probably watching this. Actually, she tends to do that. Just watching from the other room. Uh, so this weekend, go socks. Big Poppy's getting his number retired. That's, that's, that's what I'm enjoying. And I'm hoping it cools the hell off uh, because I really have not even been able to leave the house because it's like a thousand degrees here. 
which is funny because my cousin's in town from Texas for a conference, and, and she was saying something about the traffic because she just got into town. I was like, yeah, we're in the middle of a heat wave, uh, but it's probably nothing for you. And she texts back, she goes, oh yeah, we, were, we went for a walk earlier, it's beautiful. I was like, Jesus Christ, we're spoiled. Spoiled here in Southern California. Uh, so, stay good, wall fans. Uh, always, always, always remember, no matter what you do, especially with the freaking world we live in now, use common sense. Kevin. <laughs> Go back and watch the video, Kevin. Get here quicker. I give you an excuse uh, because you have two kids. I barely survived with one. Uh, yes, Chris, you need to be watching... Uh, be watching the number of retirement tomorrow. We'll talk about it later. Uh, but I do have to go. It's hot. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta go eat some dinner. I gotta go to bed. I gotta go get this uploaded. I gotta finish working. Eh, stuff happens. So remember, common sense. Next time, be on time, Kevin.